millions of acres of citrus. Florida is America's leading producer of citrus. It's no coincidence, then, that the Sunshine State also leads in production of one of the most preferred flavors of honey, citrus or orange blossom honey. These two industries exist side by side, citrus and honey, each helping the other. It's an interesting story, a story that has seen Florida become one of the nation's leading producers of honey. As each year begins, the honeybee population is found in Florida's wooded areas, where the hives have been placed for the winter. Here the bees feed on the wildflowers in the underbrush and trees. Sugar water is placed at the opening of each hive for additional food. The sugar water stimulates the bees to produce more worker bees for the hard work ahead. Smokers are fired up in the springtime as thousands of colonies of bees are moved to the orange groves. In central and south Florida's rolling acres of citrus, 150,000 colonies of bees are tucked away among the 60 million trees. They produce Florida's largest single crop of honey. Beekeepers receive permission from the grove owners to set the hives out in the citrus areas. The grove owners know the bees help pollinate the trees. In fact, bees are worth about 20 times more as pollinators than for the honey they produce. Members of the Florida State Beekeepers Association work hard to keep the colonies in strong condition so they can produce a high quality orange blossom honey. Constant inspection is necessary to see that a disease doesn't invade the hives. Disease could devastate whole colonies of bees. Inside the boxes or supers, frames containing foundation wax give the bees a good start for building the wax combs where the honey will be stored. When the bees have harvested the honey, the frames will be filled with cells of golden liquid. How much honey do the bees gather? University of Florida researchers can tell you. They've set up hives on scales at five locations throughout the citrus country. And every day during the citrus bloom, the hives are weighed. Using such records, it has been shown that colonies have gained more than 19 pounds of honey in one day, and that the total during a three-week period can be as much as 235 pounds. The daily records tell researchers when the citrus nectar flow has begun and when it has ended. So the beekeepers will know when to move their hives into the groves. Field bees come into the hive laden with nectar in their honey sacks. The process by which the honey is manufactured is a mystery known only to the bees. Through their fanning action, rapid motion of the wings over the cells, bees are able to lower the moisture content of the honey to as little as 15% and still have a liquid of simple sugars. This is comb honey put into the cells of a frame and ripened by the action of the bees. When a beehive shows a lack of vigor, the beekeeper may remove the old queen and add a new one through introduction of a specially made queen cell. The new queen will emerge in a few days and begin her work of laying as many as a thousand eggs a day. This rejuvenates the hive. A good active queen like this one may quickly bring her colony's population to as many as 25,000 busy workers. 
When the honey has been sealed in the cells with a cap of wax, it is ready to be harvested. Several methods may be used to remove the worker bees from the supers as the harvest begins. One modern method is high pressure air, which blows the bees off the honeycomb. Once free of bees, the supers are loaded on a truck and taken to the extracting plant. The bees, of course, aren't too happy about all this. Large-scale beekeepers have their own extracting plants. There are about a hundred of these in Florida. This is where the honey will be removed from the comb and placed in containers. A harvest of honey, hundreds of supers ready for processing. The frames in these supers are spaced widely and fastened in place so the beekeeper can run them through a machine that removes the caps from the cells. As handlers discover, a few supers of honey can be extremely heavy. The heavier the better for Florida's economy, for honey brings about $4 million in cash income to its producers. That's for a crop that ranges around 20 million pounds. In a good year, Florida's honey crop goes above the 25 million pound mark. In the extraction process, the supers are run past a series of machine-driven knife blades. Man undoes, in a few minutes, what it took thousands of bees many days to accomplish. Interestingly enough, honey needs no refrigeration. It will be stored in a dry place at between 75 and 80 degrees after it has been removed from the comb by centrifugal force. Another machine separates the honey from the little bits of wax. And this is the beginning of an offshoot industry, beeswax. The cakes of wax are sold to firms which make such things as cosmetics, candles, beekeeping supplies, and more than 300 other items. The pure honey is now ready for the table, where it furnishes energy and nutrition for young and old. The plastic squeeze bear is a neat, drip-free way to serve the sweet treat at the table. The University of Florida Research Center at Lake Alfred, new products have been developed combining citrus and honey. Professor R. W. Olson is one of the scientists who experimented with packing grapefruit juice and grapefruit sections with honey. A scientist from private industry is Dr. Morris Radcliffe. Radcliffe is in charge of quality control for a large citrus cooperative which has been marketing grapefruit juice mixed with honey. It's been a big success in recent years. University of Florida researchers are constantly at work attempting to find new ways to market Florida's products, and that includes both citrus and honey. At the Lake Alfred Research Center, test labs are set up to evaluate the combination of the two products through actual taste testing. Grapefruit halves make a natural individual serving, and they're marketable with honey added. Northern markets are demanding such new products as this and honey mixed with juice 
for sale to the homemaker as well as to restaurants, cafeterias, and delicatessens. And so, citrus and honey, side by side in the grove, are rejoined once again for the consumer. <laughs>